Sam explains. It's your old film animation show. Starring your old friend, Hiram H.B., Erasmus Eraser, and Freddie F.A. Thrill as they chase the elusive muse, Irene Inspiration. Will they ever catch her? Will you ever catch her? Watch this episode and learn something to your advantage. Well, that was me shooting myself under the rostrum. Fortunately, I'm a very bad shot. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about all the animation that one can do uh, off the peg bar, cut out animation. Now, you don't even need a rostrum. You can use something like this, a simple tripod setup. Now, I'm going to take a couple of frames, move my object, Take another couple of frames. There I am doing animation. Now, what else can I animate? Well, buttons, jewelry, toy cars. How about this? Our friend Terry Finley made that one. Now, you remember Penny Nuttall Smith and her pastry board? Well, now she goes one further and she starts animating objects to music. Here's a selection of objects that you can animate. Uh, these little toy bricks, you see, you can make a little train here, going under a bridge. Uh, costume jewellery, you can... Uh, that looks very nice if you get close in and it sparkles, you know, it looks very nice. Uh, dinky toys, very good for animating. And um, buttons.
Which brings me to puppet animation. Now you definitely don't need a rostrum for puppet animation. They're shot like live action. You need a, a camera like this on a tripod, uh, either at 90 degrees or 45 degrees as I have it here now. You need a couple of ordinary three-dimensional lighting, one light here to uh, light up the scene, and another one round here to just sort of take the edge out of the, out of the shadows. Uh, it all depends on what sort of lighting you want, whether you want high-key lighting or low-key lighting or dramatic lighting or, you know. Uh, so just move your lights around until you're, you're happy with the, with the effect. Now you can buy an assortment of these sort of bendy toys. There are lots of them on the market. They're marvellous for animation because you can... You push it into a certain position, the thing stays there, you see. You take a couple of frames and then you move the tail back there. You take another couple of frames, move it back there, and the result is the, the dog is wagging its tail. It can flap its ears. The giraffe can go up and down. This little one can wag his tail. And so you get some marvelous animation out of those. Now here we have a Uncle Wungle bird, and I've sort of fixed him down with plasticine under his feet there, so that when I make him walk, I just move him one step like that. I come round, I take a couple of frames, I move the next one like that, anchor him down, wait for him to steady up, and then bang, bang, another two, and so on and so forth, and you'll get a nice little walk. How do we time movement, whether it's puppets or objects? Now the best thing to do is to imagine the movement and go through the, the motions yourself. Now I'm drinking a cup of tea and I'm going to use my timing method of little monkeys. One little monkey representing one second in time. One little monkey, two little monkeys, three little monkeys, four little monkeys, five little monkeys. Now that whole movement should take five seconds. Now I turn that into frames and jot it down on my storyboard. Now, one man who really knew about timing was Trinker, the famous Czech puppet filmmaker. 